Praise the Lord. Should we stand to our feet this morning? Welcome everybody to the house of God. It's Palm Sunday. And if you don't know what that means, we're going to get into it in just a little bit. But we want to welcome everyone to the house of God. Uh, I'm going to invite you wherever you're, you're standing just to bow your heads, to close your eyes. We're going to go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We honor you. We glorify you. As we have entered your house this morning, Lord, we have come this morning to praise you, to exalt you, to proclaim your goodness in this house. Your presence is already here, and we give you permission, Lord, at this very moment, Lord, to do what you want to do. Do what you want to do in this house. Do what you want to do in everybody's life. Touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Touch our souls, Lord. Renew us, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us. Bring us peace and renew, Lord, into our lives, Lord Jesus. We have come into your house to lift your name up on high to declare that you are king that there's no one higher no one more beautiful no one greater than you lord above all lord our desire is lord jesus for you to be glorified for you to be exalted and only for you lord to be praised lord jesus so in your name in the name of jesus the church of huntington beach says aloud amen and amen can we give god praises this morning can we put our hands this morning and just begin saying how good, how awesome he has been.
to the king this morning come on can we lift up a shout of victory in this this house this morning your praises your hand claps your voice saying hallelujah is praises to your god is praises to the king of kings oh hallelujah god we praise you we magnify you in your house this morning we feel your presence in your house this morning, Lord, and, and we believe, Lord, that you can do something great in each and every one of us, Lord. We receive your word. Let your spirit work in each and every one of us, Lord. We welcome your Holy Spirit in this house this morning, Lord.
God who does great and mighty things is in the house this morning. We believe in your power. We believe in your wonder working, miracle working power, Lord. And we know that you're in the house this morning. Come on, can we just lift up our hands for a few moments right now? And just acknowledge God's presence in the house. Can we just invite him in the house this morning? He's already here, but can we just invite him into our hearts this morning? Can we just tell him, Lord, have your way this morning. Whatever you want to do, Lord, do it through me. Soften my heart, Lord. Humble me, Lord. Renew me, Lord. I need more of you. I'm not going to leave this place the same way I came in, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to feel you. I want to be broken at your feet. Is there anybody in the house this morning who has that same desire as I do? That I want something different. I want something to shift in my life this morning. I'm not going to leave this service the same way I came in. If I'm in God's house, I know something new, something beautiful, renewal can happen in God's presence. Come on, can we just praise and can we put our hands together and just acknowledge God's presence in the house this morning? Uh, once again, we want to just welcome everybody to the house of God. We're so excited to, uh, to see you this morning. I'm glad you made it. It's Palm Sunday. Um, if you guys don't know, and I'm going to invite you if the ushers could come forth. We're going to pick up our tithes, our offering. But just to remind you, today we, we begin our, 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 our journey into um, hearing, learning, and receiving, and reminding ourselves um, Jesus' is last last week um, this week is, is Holy Week we, we begin with Palm Sunday today tomorrow we're going to be here Monday through Friday we're going to be here at 7.30 and uh, I, I believe everyone already confirmed that they're going to be they're going to be coming here you guys said amen 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 so we're going to be here Monday through Friday hearing God's word uh, beginning tomorrow and then Saturday we're going to be here at 6.30 and Sunday at 11 a.m. for our bilingual service. Amen? I said amen, church. Amen, amen. How many are excited to be in the house of God this morning? I'm excited to be in the house of God this morning. There's always just something beautiful about being in a, and worshiping amongst God's people. We're going to have a couple of announcements for all you. As you make your way forward for your tithes, for, for your offering, amen. Uh, the ladies are uniting in prayer every Saturday of this month at 7 a.m. So we want to remind all the ladies, 7 a.m. prayer here at the church. Amen, amen. Amen. Once again, we begin Holy Week today. I'm continuing on tomorrow. So starting tomorrow, I want to remind you, 7.30 p.m., we're going to be here. We promise you we're not going to uh, go. There are not going to be extensive services um, unless God begins to work, which he is going to work. Um, but uh, if anything happens, our plan is not to hold you up too late. I know you guys work and whatnot. But we're going to, it is going to be a sacrifice. We understand that. But we don't do this um, year round, we don't do this every month or every week. It's a sacrifice, and uh, I believe that God is gonna bless each and every one of us who are in attendance. I know we've been praying, we've been fasting, and I know God is gonna do something great as we journey into His into this week. So Monday through Friday, seven thirty. Saturday at six p.m. Those are correction. There Sunday at, or Saturday at six p.m. And then Sunday, uh, we're gonna have our our bilingual service. And next Sunday as well, God bless all of our ladies, you're going to have uh, your, your picture day. You are going to be coordinating with Fuchsia Pink and Black, so come ready. Uh, you guys have had time to prepare, go shopping. You guys can, can you still have time if you haven't uh, have coordinated with the color. God bless our, our ladies department. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Um, April 12th, for the ladies' department, you're going to have your, your first event of the year. It's going to be fr a Friday, again, April 12th at 7 p.m. It's going to be here at the local church entitled Crown with Grace and Favor. Crown with Grace and Favor. This is for all the local ladies. 
you're invited to join up on April 12th, Friday at 7 p.m. here at the church. For all of our men, we have our sunrise service approaching very soon, April 14th at 5.30 a.m. We want to remind you again, it's not just for the men. If you have your son with you, bring them uh, with you. It's going to be held at the church of, I believe it's, yeah, Family Life Center. It's going to be at 5.30 a.m. entitled Passing the Baton, Passing the Baton. And for all of our ladies, we want to remind you that your retreat is coming up May 9th to the 11th. It's going to be held at Empathy Suites. You have Sister Martha Baez de Valero entitled Empowered to Build. So speak to your ladies department, your ladies board so you can reserve your spot, begin making payments if you desire to, to be there, to be in attendance. Amen. And for all of our men, we have a lot more time to prepare for October 3rd to the 5th. We're going to have our camp entitled Men with a Mission with Bishop Frank Romo and his son, Pastor Anthony Romo. We invite you to the same thing, to speak to your men's department, reserve your spot so you can be blessed during these dates. Reserve your spots with your, with your jobs, with your bosses. Tell them, I, I, I'm not going to be there because I'm going to be somewhere else receiving God's word for my life. Amen. 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 We're going to pray at this time, church. I'm going to invite you just to bow your heads, to close your eyes. We're going to pray for these tithes, for these offering. Heavenly Father, we honor you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are good. You are faithful. You are mighty, Lord, and we recognize you as so. We pray for these tithes, for this offering, that we may administer according, Lord, to your will. Or just give us the discernment to know how to administer these funds. Bless every household, every family. Every man in their jobs, every woman in their jobs, their families, their marriages, their children, Lord Jesus. And if there is someone in this house that finds themselves in a moment of need, I pray, Lord, that you, you open up the door, the right door at your determined time, Lord Jesus. But during this time, show them to rely on you, to trust in you, Lord Jesus, because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And we know not what is need, Lord Jesus, because you always provide exactly what we need. So to you be all honor, to you be all glory, and in the name of Jesus, the church says aloud, amen and amen. Come on, can we praise them this morning? I know it's early. I know it's early. Some of you woke up, had enough time to go get your coffee, your espresso shots, or whatever, whatever you drink, your matcha, your tea. Um, some of you maybe possibly forgot, but... It's Palm Sunday, amen? And if you don't know what Palm Sunday is this morning, we're going to be taking a deeper di dive into it. And I hope today's message gives you a better understanding of why this day is so significant to every church. Every Christian believing, every Jesus believing apostolic Pentecostal church this morning. It's a very significant day. And, and I want to just tell you that this morning the purpose of my message is for us to take our praise, to take our worship to the next level. But before we even get there, can we just begin to praise God? I know God is in the house this morning. It's up to us to be willing to receive his word on this Palm Sunday. Our goal is to raise up a Hosanna. Amen. Can we raise up a Hosanna to God this morning? Can we say Hosanna to God this morning? If you don't know what Hosanna means, ho Hosanna is the way that we express our gratitude to God, inviting him. For those of, you, those of you who don't know what Hosanna means, it means God, oh, save us. So when the people during that time were crying out Hosanna, they were proclaiming for Jesus to save them. So this morning, can we raise up a Hosanna? Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and we're going to raise up a hallelujah. But on this Palm Sunday, the church of Huntington Beach raises a Hosanna to the God that we know by name. And his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm going to invite you just to open up your Bibles to the book of Zechariah, uh, chapter 9, verse 9. And um, this morning, it's going to be more so a, a message to, um, to give us an understanding of Jesus' triumphal entry. And um, if we can put up the New King James Version, please. Amen, amen. But this morning, I'm going to be giving you a, a small little 
preface, if you want to call it that, a little a background on, on this scripture that we're about to read. And uh, I ask you to be patient with me, to follow me. I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture this morning. But I pray that God has a word for the Church of Huntington Beach this morning. I, I believe that God has a word for each and every one of us. Um, but before we read Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, I want to just begin by, by sharing with you that this scripture was written about 500 years before it finally explodes or before this word is, is fulfilled in the Gospels. And, and, and we're, what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to begin by reading from the book of Zechariah and we're going to be taking from each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and again, the purpose of my message today is for us to take our praise, our, our celebration, our exaltations to God to the next level. For, to give you a reason this morning, if you don't have a reason already, to praise him and to be a little louder this morning. That's what I want to do because there is power and there is purpose in praise. Amen? So about 500 years ago, uh, before this, 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 this verse or this prophecy was fulfilled... There was a, a man, a prophet by the name of Zechariah, who at this time of him writing this, this scripture, he was writing these historical judgments. And, and all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's funny because I feel like sometimes the way that these prophets wrote these prophecies, at times they, they didn't even know what they were writing. They were just writing based off of, of, of what God was, was speaking to them for. But it's like if he, he, he took a break from what he was writing with these historical judgments and he had this, this burst or this, this, this moment, this virtue, this moment of virtue where he's able to see into the future and he begins writing this. And, and again, I think sometimes these prophets didn't fully understand what, what they were writing. It's, for example, when Isaiah wrote, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear forth a child whose, whose name shall be called Emmanuel. And then he kept writing the business of the day. These prophets would just take a break from what they were doing and begin writing what, what God was influencing them to write. So, of course, we know that everything from the Old Testament to the book of Malachi points to one, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? So I want to start off this morning with this scripture, and this is the message that we have for you today. So this is Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. So that's the first scripture I want to begin with this morning. And before we get into it, I'm just going to invite you all just to pray with me. Let's just have God, allow God to have his way in each and every one of us this morning. Heavenly Father, your presence is in this place. But before we speak anything this morning, Lord, before we dive into your word, Lord Jesus, we welcome your presence, Lord. Not just in this house, but in our hearts, Lord. For you to do what you want to do, Lord. For some of us, it's been very long, Lord, since we have felt your presence. It has been very long, Lord Jesus, since we lift up, lifted up our hands. Since we have lifted up a hosanna, a hallelujah to you, Lord. But this morning, Lord, I ask you, I plead to you, soften my heart, Lord Jesus. Soften each and every one of our hearts, Lord Jesus, to lay aside our pride, lay aside our ego, lay aside our worries, and to acknowledge and to receive the word that you have for us and for this church and for this generation. I pray that this morning, Lord Jesus, we're going to enter into a new dimension, a new level in our praise and in our worship. So to you be all honor, to you be all glory, and in your name, the name of Jesus, the church of Huntington Beach says, amen and amen, amen. Uh, you may take your seats, church. You may take your seats. Uh, the, the title that I want to give today's message is Hosanna. Hosanna, the king is coming. 
I want you I want you to take this message and apply it for you directly. As I was preparing for this message, as I always do, my desire is always uh, speaking to myself. I ask God, God, speak to me. What do I need? What does the church need? What do we need to hear? I don't separate myself from receiving this message, but I pray that you open up your hearts to receive it as well. In the book of Zechariah, we, we begin by, by reading, the verse begins by saying, rejoice. It's not just saying rejoice in a, in a melancholy or in a calm or in a calm demeanor. It, it very directly reads and it states, rejoice greatly. So when I tell you this morning for you to receive that word today, for you to receive that encouragement, that motivation today, I'm speaking to you personally and I'm speaking to the church of Huntington Beach where it says, Oh, daughter of Huntington Beach, shout daughter of Orange County. So what, is, what does he have? Why should we shout? Why should we rejoice? He has righteousness and salvation and he's riding on a donkey, on a donkey. The question that I'm sure many of you have this morning, if you've never read the scripture or if you're unfamiliar with Jesus' triumphal entry or, or maybe you've been asked this before, is, is the question you may have in your mind right now is, is why a donkey? Why a donkey? Isn't this the king of kings and the lord of lords? Isn't this the God that was manifested in the flesh? Isn't he who rules and runs the universe? Isn't he the one who sits on the circle of the earth and considers men like grasshoppers? Isn't he the one who the heavens of the heavens cannot contain his glory? Why is he coming on a donkey? Why not a horse? Something more extravagant, something more, 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 maybe that looks a little bit better, but why? Why a donkey? And the, the, the answer that I have for you is, is during that time when, when kings would, would ride a horse, it was a sign that they were preparing for battle, whether that was an offensive battle or a defensive battle, they were preparing for a battle. Uh, but when kings would ride on a donkey, the message, the symbolism of them riding in on a donkey was saying, I come in peace. This prince of peace named Jesus Christ, from the beginning and inception of his announcements, when the angels came to the shepherds and said, peace and goodwill to all men, our God, Jesus Christ, this morning I want you to know that he comes in peace. He comes to bring peace to each and every one of our lives. If you don't know him, I want you to know this morning that my God does not come for vengeance against you right now. My God comes with a message, a message of peace for your life, a message of peace for your family, a message of peace for the church of Huntington Beach, a message of peace for our communities. That is the message that God comes carrying. That is the message that that we need to take into the world. Our God comes with a message of peace. So we're going to look at four accounts this morning. Like I said, I'm going to be reading a few scriptures. And as we get more familiar with the story, I'm not going to be reading it all. But I come with four accounts this morning of, of the four men who wrote one gospel, one message. This is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But I want to begin by reading the book of Matthew. Uh, again, if you have it, you can put the book of Matthew, chapter 21. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says like this. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, now then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying. And so now at this time, he, they're, they're quoting Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Like I said, the first verse that we read this morning, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, was written 500 years before it even came to pass. 
before it explodes and is fulfilled. So now they're, they're, it's here in this scripture, they're quoting Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set, set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who, who went and before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So in this first account in the book of Matthew, I want you to notice that these people, I want you to notice the description of what, what the scripture is saying that these people, that these multitudes, that these crowds were doing. It said that these people were taking off their cloaks, that they were taking off their robes. The, these robes were of many different colors, probably greens and pinks and, and blues and yellows and, and many other various colors. And then they began to mix it in with the greenery of the trees, of the palms. They recognized Jesus. They recognized Jesus' entry because he had done something for them. For many of them, Jesus had healed them. The crowd was, was full of people who each of them, uh, 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 in some kind of way, or at least many of them, had some kind of connection with Jesus. Because in that crowd... You had men who, who were blind and now can see. You had people who, who were sick and now are healed. You had men that were paralyzed and now they can walk on their own. You had people who couldn't hear and now they can hear. I'm, I'm not too sure it's possible that, that the lady, the woman that had the issue of the blood was there. I don't know if Jairus' 12-year-old daughter was there. But the, the scripture that we just read tells us very clearly that the multitude, the crowd, that was there in, in response to Jesus' arrival, to Jesus' triumphal entry was one simple word. It was Hosanna, 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 Hosanna to the son of David. That was their response. And what I want to mention to you this morning, if we pay attention to this clear point in the account of Matthew, is that if we are going to raise up a Hosanna to him, we must take things off of ourselves. This morning... If you want your Hosanna to have meaning, if you want your Hosanna to have value, we must take things off of ourselves. We need to disrobe or dispose of some things that are on us. These people recognize them as the king. They took off and they laid it on the donkey and they laid it on the streets. They didn't care how much it was worth. They took off their robe, they took off their clothes, they took off whatever they had, and they placed it on the donkey. They placed it on these streets, and the streets were not beautifully paved. These streets were streets of dirt. They were dirty, but to them, oh, they were receiving the king with the hosanna. Whatever it takes, whatever I got to take off, I receive the king of glory, the Messiah, with the hosanna. If you're going to raise your praises, you got to take off some pride this morning. You got to take off your ego this morning. You got to take off your shame and worry. I know, church, I know sometimes we come into God's house and we got a bunch of things on our mind. Work's not going good. My kids are not in church. My marriage isn't on a, in a good place right now. Or I'm not sure how I'm going to tell my wife that I just got let go. How am I going to tell my husband that I'm going through this issue? How am I going to do X, Y, and Z? Whatever your concerns are. But when you come into God's house, I want to encourage you this morning that you got to take it off. You got to take it off and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Jesus and just raise up a Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Some of us come into God's house and we say, 
I got it all good right now. My life's put together. My finances are fantastic. My marriage, I got a beautiful wife. I got great kids. I got X, Y, and Z. And you walk in with this, 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 this pride, this ego. And when we encourage you to raise up your hands and to lift up a praise, you just stand there. But just know what we do in this service, your praise, when you lift up your hands, I want to let you know you're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for the musicians. You're doing it for the God who comes and brought you peace. I want to tell you this morning, the king is here. The king is here. The king is here. Raise up a Hosanna. Put your pride aside. Put your ego aside. Put your worry aside. Put your bad report aside. And recognize that there is a king in this house. That there is a Messiah. And we know him by name. And we know him to be Jesus Christ. I encourage you, take it off this morning, place it at the feet of Jesus, and say, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Can we raise up a Hosanna this morning? Come on. Can we raise up a Hosanna this morning? Can I just share my heart this morning? My desire... It's for one day to come into this house before the music even starts, before the MC even grabs the mic, before we ask who's preaching today, who's speaking today. Sometimes I feel like we, 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 we depend on how good the service is going to be depending on who's MCing or who's speaking it doesn't matter to me what songs we're going to sing. It doesn't matter to me who's going to preach. My sole desire is to enter through these doors, come into this altar and say, Hosanna! God, you're mighty. God, you're great. We don't have to wait for the music. We don't got to wait for the speaker. We don't got to say, preacher, do your job. Preacher, motivate me. No, no, no. My God's done enough for me. From the moment I enter the parking lot, I want to feel his glory. And I know... And as that being my desire, God spoke to me and he said, Marcos, if you want to feel my glory from the moment that you park your car, you're going to have to take a couple things off of you. What do you got to take off this morning, church? What do you got to take off this morning? Is that thing that's on your mind or that thing that has you so proud and full of ego, is it greater than your God? Is it greater than your God? Absolutely not. There's nothing more precious. There's nothing more marvelous. There's nothing more beautiful than just being at the feet of Jesus. We look at Mark's account. The same story happens. Mark lists how Jesus encouraged them. Go, you're going to see a cult. Grab it, the donkey, and if anyone says they have need of them, tell them the Lord needs it. And they did exactly that. So I'm going to go where it begins by saying, this is Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. So they went on their way and found the colt by the door outside the street and loosed it. But some of them who, who had stood there said to them, what are you doing, loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, so they let them go. So Jesus told them, just tell them that the Lord has need of it, and they did exactly that. So then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. Same story, different account, different vantage point. And many of them spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying once again, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But what I want us to take from Matthew's account, and, and this is a, a, a mark. This is, it's said in the same way in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's stated the same way. It's written the same way. I want us to pay attention and to notice a, a punctuation point. 
The punctuation point that is listed after Hosanna is an exclamation point. And this is, again, both listed in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and, and any time, I know many of you went to school. I know all of us went to school, whether it's in, in Mexico and what, another different country or a different state. They all taught us the same thing. When you put an exclamation point, it, it's to denote what? Excitement or enthusiasm or a loud form of expression. <clears throat> so anytime we see an exclamation point when we're reading a book or reading a chapter or reading the Bible, it's to denote emphasis, to denote celebration, assurance that something great is happening. Amen? When your team wins, you say, the Lakers won. Right? I was just telling the team back there, I don't know how I came up, but I was telling them the day that I told my wife that I loved her. It was, that one's a little bit different because it was like, I love you, testing the waters a little bit, right? I probably wouldn't exp- put an explanation point, right? But the day I married her was, I love you. I love you. He asked me to marry him. I'm marrying her. I got baptized. Those are things that denote excitement, celebration. It's when you're excited, when you want to mark that it's something that marks great emphasis. You don't say it without without an an exclamation point. I'm just saying this morning, we need to understand who we are as a church. Something that our pastor always says is the church was born loud and we're going to leave loud. The church was born with a shout of praise, and we're going to leave with a shout of praise. I'm just saying this morning that if we are a Pentecostal, apostolic, believing church who believes in the infilling of the Holy Ghost, that believes that there is power in praise, I believe that this morning we got to add an exclamation point to our praise and say, Hosanna! 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 Amen. As some of us, it takes us so long to, to find the strength, the need to, to want to lift up our hands, to, to say a hallelujah, to even sing a song. And, and I believe we got to be more willing to, to receive what God wants to do. But in order to do that... We need to lift up a shout of praise and add an exclamation point. Why do we need to praise? Why do we encourage you to lift up your voice, to lift up your hands, and to to, to proclaim God's goodness in his house? It's because the word of God tells us that the Lord dwells in the praises of his people. I want us to get to a point that the moment that we enter those doors, the moment that the service begins, there will be healings while the preaching is going on. God will break chains of the sinners conviction will come it's not just my responsibility it's not just the preacher's responsibility it's the church's responsibility to praise the God who has done great and mighty things in our life this morning we need to put on our celebration we need to lower our yielding point to God and allow God to do what he wants to do in our lives by the power of the word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning we need to raise up a loud hosanna. So now these people who were saying this, this crowd, this multitude, is because Jesus had done something great for them. These, all, all these people that were there shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were doing this and they had the liberty to do so because they had recognized that God had done something for them. Do you get the message this morning, church? Has God done something great for you? One more time, has God done something great for you? If you solely believe that, you wouldn't be waiting for the music. You wouldn't be waiting for the preaching. The moment that you would enter those doors, you would have the liberty to recognize God. I thank you. God, I need you. I know God has done many great things for each and every one of us. And Luke's account, I'm going to just jump over to Luke's account. 
Luke, I'm going to just spend a little bit of, of a shorter time. And it reads like this, Luke chapter 19, verses 36 through 40. It says, and as he went, many, many spread their clothes on the road. Them. Then as he was drawing near the, the descent of the Mount of Olives, those whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Like I said in the book of Luke, I'm going to spend a little bit of less time in reading the scriptures because it's, it's a different account, but it's the same story. In the book of Luke, it's, it's, it, I want us to notice um, a, little, a little word that's listed on there. And I'm going to begin concluding, so if we can get the musicians, I'm not going to spend too much time this morning. But I want to put emphasis on that word, many. That word, many, it's... It's listed, if you read your Bible, I'm reading from the New King James Version, it's on there in italics, which means it wasn't on there in the original written version, but it's on there in italics because the translators, the writers that translated it to the New King James Version, they added it to, to show us that not everybody did. There was a great crowd there, but not everybody lifted up a Hosanna. Not everyone was receiving the Lord Jesus with excitement, with joy in their heart. And, and to me, that just spoke to me because, because it reminded me that I don't want to be one of those people. I don't want to be a person that doesn't recognize when the king is present. I don't want to be somebody who doesn't have the liberty, the freedom to lift up uh, Hosanna. It even gets so bad where the scripture even says that the Pharisees, they, they even, they, they, they shouted from the crowd and, and say, and they pretty much were telling Jesus to quiet down his followers. They were asking Jesus, and the Pharisees were someone that didn't like Jesus. They hated Jesus. And they were trying to tell him, quiet down the crowd and then the response that, that Jesus gives to them tells us a lot. He says, I tell you, if, if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. And, and the, the symbolic way of saying this is, is, is he's telling us that he is so great, that he is so mighty. That his, his glory cannot be contained. That even if I were to quiet down the crowd, the rock, something in the atmosphere is going to have to praise me. So this morning, I want to ask you, are you going to allow a rock to take your place? Are you going to allow a rock to take your place? I don't know about you this morning, but I'm not going to allow no rock to take my place. God has done such a great and mighty work in my life that I got to shout. I got to jump. I got to dance. I got to raise up a Hosanna to the son of David. I want to ask you to stand to your feet. I know this morning, maybe this is your first time taking a deeper dive into Jesus' triumphal entry. The king was coming. They raised up a hosanna. And in John's account, there's a, a, a scripture, a verse in there, and it states that his disciples did not understand these things at first. Maybe you came in this morning and you have a background of, if you were raised up Catholic, you were raised up in some kind of other denomination or another kind of belief system, and, and you came into the house of God, they invited you, and you came, and you are probably expecting candles, you were ex uh, expecting a very solemn place, you were expecting a place where they said, shh, you gotta be quiet, shh, you gotta be quiet. I don't know what you were expecting, but this house, this church, is a Pentecostal apostolic Jesus believing church. We recognize that God has done a great and mighty work in each and every one of our lives. 
So when we enter into a place where his glory is present, we can't stay silent. We can't stay silent. I said we can't stay silent. Because Jesus even said, if these people were to be quiet, somebody's going to have to proclaim my glory. I'm not going to take, let no rock take my place. Whatever you are going through right now, you will soon know. And this is the word that I want you to, to, to leave with you. This is your first time here. I want you to know that whatever is going on in your life right now, I want you to know that Jesus comes with a message of peace. Jesus comes with a message of peace for your life. And the safest place that you can abide in is in God's presence. This lowly king, this humble king who came down this little path sitting on a donkey. He was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He came with this message of peace. But I'm here to tell you. And we're going to soon learn in this coming week. We're going to go through his journey. But that same king that was entering and the people were shouting a Hosanna. And we know what happened on the third day. But I'm telling you that this same king, this same Jesus is coming back again. We know this to be. We know this to be, and we call it the second coming of Jesus Christ. But before this happens, we believe that the church will be taken away, or some of us know it as the rapture. Right when it gets bad, the Lord himself will shout, and a trump of an archangel shall descend from the heaven, and the dead in Christ shall rise up again, and those alive will be caught up to meet the Lord. And, and what I want you to know that is if you want to be a part a part of this, you need to be a part of the church. You need to be a part of the church. You need to repent of your sins. Be baptized in the presence, precious name of Jesus. And you shall receive the gift, the power of the Holy Spirit. And live as best as you can according to the power of the Holy Spirit. But what we know to be true is that Seven years after this, approximately seven years after this, the one, the one who came riding on a donkey, he's not coming back riding on a donkey. He's coming back on a horse. And he's going to destroy all of his adversaries. And he's going to come the sash that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords there comes a day where every tongue shall confess and every knee will bow and recognize that he is Lord Church, you and I don't have to wait until that day to confess that. You and I don't have to wait until that day to get on our knees and say that you are King of Kings, that you are Lord of Lords. This morning, put your pride aside, put your worries aside, put your egos aside, and raise up a Hosanna. We can rejoice, church. We can rejoice, church. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. The king is here. The king is here. The king is here. The king is here. I'm going to invite you just to lift up your hands wherever you're standing right now. <laughs> Allow God to do what he wants to do in your life right now. 
God, we receive your word. We need a shift in our life. What has been getting in our way of our Hosanna? What do we got to let go of? What do we got to change? What do we got to do, Lord? Let me be not one that doesn't recognize your glory. Let me be one that shouts Hosanna. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but this morning, I need a fresh wind. I need a fresh wind. I need an infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's been some time. It's been some time since the Lord touched you. It's been some time since you've allowed him to have his way in your life. This morning, God wants to pour out of his glory.